Good morning, church. Come on and stand with us today. You know, as we have the opportunity to come together, it's a glorious day. What, regardless of what you've had in your week or what you felt like or, or whatever situations you faced, it's a glorious day. And the reason it's glorious is because we are the redeemed of the Lord. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let us declare it from generation to generation. The word says that one generation should praise his works to another and declare his mighty acts. And that begins, all right, come on, lift your hand. Come on, come on, lift your voice. Clap your hands. Let's declare it. Because, because the righteous will declare, man, the goodness of God is so awesome in our lives. You know what I'm saying? And I've heard it said, if we don't have a shout in the house of God, we won't even have a whisper in the street. And I tend to agree with that. So, so come on, we're going to shout today. I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's shout. Let's lift up glorious praise to our God and our King. Come on, praise him. Lift it up.
We thank you, Lord. How many are grateful to be in the Father's house today? Come on, lift another shout of praise.
will sing of the goodness of God. Sing it out. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, Lord. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Love your voice, yes, Lord. You have led me through the fire and in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. It's running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after. If you have experienced the goodness of God in your life, let's lift up a shout to God. Hallelujah! We bless you, mighty God. We honor you, King Jesus. Lord, we are so thankful for everything that you have done in our lives those things that we have noted your hand, and even those things where we have missed out on your goodness and grace. God, we are so grateful 
We are so grateful for who you are in our lives. You minister to us right where we are. You encourage us. You challenge us. You minister life to us. And we are so grateful that you have given us the revelation of your son, Jesus Christ, who paid the ultimate price for our sins so that in believing in him, we can have life and that life more abundantly. God, we are so grateful for a community of faith. Thank you that we can link arms one with another, join our faith with each other, and believe you to do mighty and wonderful things. God, we are grateful that here we find ourselves on day 12 of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. God, as a corporate body, we are crying out for our nation. God, we are so grateful that your word encourages us to come boldly before your throne of grace. Because at your throne is where we find mercy and grace in the time of need. And so we ask, Father, help us. Have mercy on our country. Father, we are so grateful that you are him who does exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. God, we are so encouraged today knowing that you are sovereign over it all and you are executing your perfect will across this land. Father, we pray be magnified, be glorified. Father, for we know that in your glorification we find the life that we were destined to live. So we bless you today. We honor you today for the freedoms afforded to us in this great country. Thank you that we have an opportunity to gather corporately and lift up the name of Jesus. We are so grateful to be in this place together. And we honor you. We bless you. We say, have your way in us today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Well, go ahead and have a seat. Good morning. Thank you for being here. If you're watching online, thank you for tuning in. If you're new to The Rock, I'm Pastor Hector. And I am joined on the stage by my fellow compadres, Pastor Ron Hyatt and Pastor Jamie Chung. You let's give it up for these two. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. Amen. Well, we, um, this month, we each spoke and shared a sermon on a series titled uh, Disarming Doubt. We each took a Sunday and we presented a different biblical worldview, excuse me, a, a different biblical insights uh, that benefit us when it comes to disarming doubt. And uh, we got together and we talked and we thought that the best way to conclude this sermon series was to have a little bit of a, a discussion, a panel, where we would dig into each other's messages a little bit further um, to dig out some of those nuggets that uh, were presented this month. How many of you received a golden nugget or two this month according to this sermon series? Well, I sure did. And we thought it would be best to kind of like take those nuggets out, polish them off a little bit, and experience and relive the richness and the goodness of God's word that we have um, uh, gone through this month. So, gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Mm. You guys ready? Let's, go. let's do it. Let's, let's jump in it. Let's jump in it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, Pastor Jamie, I have a question for you since you spoke most recently. So I have this question that's kind of fresh in my mind. Um, your sermon kind of centered on when in doubt, obey God. When in doubt, obey God. And right out of the gate, right out of the gate, you dropped the mic on that first point, man. When you said our obedience to the word of God is not dependent on us feeling good about it. Mm. How many yeah. of you like that yeah, one? Good. Yeah, that good. was a good one. Yeah, that's good. Listen, you referred to the story of Peter mm -hmm. out of Luke chapter 5, you know, when he went fishing all night and he didn't catch anything. And then um, he was instructed by Jesus the following morning uh, to cast his net on the other side of the boat, mm -hmm. which was a little awkward, I'm sure. You know, if you're a professional in a business, if you have somebody walk up to you who's not in the business giving you instructions on how you should perform your business, you might roll your eye. What you, what you, talking, what you talking about? about? What you talking about? 
<laughs> right? Well, ultimately, there was something about Jesus where Peter was like, at your word, mm-hmm. at your yeah. word. So in other words, he obeyed Jesus and cast his net on the other side of the boat and brought in the biggest catch of his life. And we read that and we think, man, that's a great and powerful story. But today it is possible to process that story this way. Peter had Jesus in the flesh, right there in front of him. Jesus spoke to him a clear word. So question, what would you say to someone who says, well, I don't have a clear word from Jesus? Is there ever a time where there is no word? Your thoughts? Well, um, one of the things that I love, you know, as I can kind of, if I'll, refer, I'll reference this as I start, uh, I've loved about teaching through the years is one of the questions I get from students a lot is that very thing. How do I know that God said something to me? How do I know that this is the word that I'm supposed to walk in? And, um, and there's this thought that like, well, she, you know, he had a word, she had a word, but I don't have a word. Um, my challenge is there is always a word. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's always a word because we have God's written word, sure and unfailing for us. That's it. And we take that written word and we walk in that. And the beauty of that, one of the things that written word tells us is this. In John 16, 33, the Holy Spirit, when he would come, he would come to guide us into all of the truth. Right? Because what was Jesus' word surrounding that? I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Okay? Now, we're not talking about the, the, something which exceeds the canon of Scripture. Okay? We're not talking about something which is extra biblical, which doesn't line up. Because the thing is, God's not confused. That's so when right. a word comes, it's going to align with that written word. Come on. When it don't align with the written word, quick tip, it ain't God. Okay? <laughs> you know. So there is always a word because you can take that written word, begin to walk in it, and trust that the Holy Spirit is going to be faithful. Yeah. To lead you and guide you into all truth. That's it. Okay? Yeah. I love to tell the story about how I got, I got the word when I knew it was time to, to, to marry that beautiful woman over there on the second row. Man, she... We see you, Miss Gina. You see her? <laughs> Distracting me all the time during worship and stuff. You always do that. So cute. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> He's jumping the gun. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. But, but the, the, I, had a, I had a word that Holy Spirit spoke to me, and this is the confidence we have, is that he speaks to us in a way that we can understand. Mm. Yeah, he does. My yeah. confidence cannot be in that I can hear God so well because I'm so spiritual. Mm. It's that God can speak to me in a way that I can understand. Yes. Come on. Yeah. And he's consistent and That's he's good. faithful. Yeah. You know? So another one is the example of Matthew chapter 16, 24, 26, when we hear the statement that we're all to deny ourselves and take up our cross. Now, now, I don't know about you, but this is 2020, and the Savior's already gone, so none of y'all picked up a physical cross, have you? So that looks a little bit different in everybody's life, what that means, the self-denial and the sacrifice of the spirit of taking up the cross. Mm. For somebody, it's leaving a job. For somebody, it's taking a word to be, become a homeschooler. For some, somebody, it's another uh, word to, to go to another city and start a business. I'm not telling any of y'all to leave. Everybody stay. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, I got your back. <laughs> you know, but whatever that word is, you're able to take it up and deny yourself and say, yes, Lord, at your word. Yeah. Mm, amen. So good. Amen. So Always yeah. l- l- let, me, let me shift gears a little bit, though. Um, with, with this, I want to I go back to you with this thing of, of resting in God that you talked about. Because I really felt a lot of that in this at your word, the mindset that we can rest and we can trust God. Mm, so sure. you yeah. talked about that whole thing. You had your acting rim on, on resting in God and trust was a big part of that. Yeah, you know, that letter T. That kinda, yeah, come on, bro. Trust. Come on, bro. You brought that, yeah. that Dominican sensation, you brought that. Um, <laughs> so there's, you know, we're, 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 we're in a state sometimes of turmoil, right? <laughs> you, you, you thought I was funny? Okay. That made me laugh. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, come on, you, you hang with us sometimes, yeah, you know, so you know how we do. It's the island vibe up here. You know how we do. the island vibe. <laughs> come on, the Caribbean's got to stick together. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we got the Caribbean. Well, c- c- come on. It's a Caribbean sandwich. Caribbean. Yeah, I, I, I gotta show you. You, you're gonna leave Pass me out. You're gonna leave. You go to Jamaica, you'll fit right in. Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. You're gonna, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna leave me out. I'm gonna ask you both off the stage. So. We ain't leaving you out. I'm not gonna leave you. 
So, so on that idea of resting and trusting God, so we're in this kind of this state of turmoil, okay? Mm-hmm. It's not like news to anybody, okay? Uh, if, if you look for five seconds at the news, we're kind of in a state of turmoil in the country, back and forth. I like this, you like that. You voting for him, you voting for them. I'm this, I'm that, blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. Facebook fights all day long, okay? So this whole thing is happening, and we've got this turmoil in our country. It creates this uneasiness in doing what we believe the will of the Lord is at times, right? And we're like, should I? You know, is that the right thing? Yeah. So what are some helpful tips to actually walking out the process of resting in the Lord? That you well, say? Um, there's a few things that I would say to that, but I'm going to offer up just one thing, and that's this. Cultivate your trust in God. Mm. Now, that sounds simplistic, but the truth of the matter is, is that as your trust in God increases, so does your rest in the turmoil. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on, bro. I'll yeah. say it again. Come on, bro. Say As it again. your trust in God increases, so does your rest in the turmoil. Yeah. Yeah. See, things typically play out this way. Turmoil mounts, right? Mm. And then anxiety begins to rise. And then there's this knee-jerk reaction to exercise more and more control. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because we right. are trying to minimize the anxiety and possibly even eliminate the turmoil. Mm. You know, when I spoke, I looked at the dad uh, in Mark chapter 9. Mm. And all of that was true in his life. You know, you have to imagine years and years and years of dealing with his son who was possessed by a demon. Mm. Lots of turmoil there. Lots of anxiety. And he controlled what he could, which was to pursue anyone who could possibly help. Well, ultimately, the dad had to surrender the idea that Jesus was just another option. Mm. Mm. See, the dad took his son to the spiritual leaders of the synagogue. They couldn't help. The dad took the boy to Jesus' own disciples, and they couldn't help. And so the dad ultimately cries out of the crowd to Jesus asking the dad, I'm excuse me, asking Jesus to help. But he had to surrender the idea that Jesus was just another option. Yeah. See, he had to believe. He had to believe if I can. Mm. Come on now. Anything is possible mm. for him who believes. Mm. So he had to believe and trust that Jesus was not only the help, but the help giver. Yeah. He had to believe that Jesus was the help giver, the one who could be trusted beyond simply meeting a need. Yeah. You see, I try, to, I try to draw a measurement between um, the idea of the level of surrender and the significance, excuse me, the significance of trust. So I, I, I set a point, and that was how surrendered before Jesus we are will determine the significance of our trust Mm. in him. I'll say that again. How surrendered before Jesus we are will determine the significance of our trust in him. In other words, if our surrender before Jesus is not so much, Mm. I'm not going to surrender that to you, Jesus. Mm. That's also an indication that our trust in him is very low. Mm. So there is this Mm. equation happening Mm. there. And... You know, I would say this with regards to our nation. Um, I believe it's more critical than ever to be yeah. surrendered before God yeah. Yeah. to is. cultivate yeah, greater yeah. trust yeah. Yeah. Yes. in Him. Yes. Yes. See, I believe that's going to help regardless of the outcomes. Mm-hmm. Regardless of the outcomes. Mm-hmm. If we trust in God, we're going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to yeah. be okay. See, you know, another beautiful thing about trusting in God is that it makes way for this exchange. See, when we trust God, we get rest in return. Yeah, yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. When yeah, we trust mm-hmm. God, yeah. we get peace in return. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we trust God, we get joy yeah, yeah. in on, return. Yeah. And the list goes yeah. on and yeah. on. And it's important to note that these gifts that God gives us, right, they are more than circumstantial experiences. They are transcendent. Yeah. They are transcendent. That's to mean that if the world is in chaos, we can still walk in peace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We can still walk yeah. in peace. Yeah. Come on, man. And I'll be frank, 
I believe the church should be leading on this front. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I believe the church should be yeah. leading on this front Absolutely. up to election day, on election day, and well past election yeah, day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yep. I believe that that is just, you know, a spirit-led response, a spirit-led way of living. And that reminds me, PR, mm-hmm. speaking of spirit, um, in, in your message, uh, you referenced it when you read out of Galatians chapter 5. Yeah. You know, you started off your message by elevating the seriousness of doubt. Uh, you were clear to distinguish that uh, doubt in and of itself is not sinful, right. but if left unchecked, it can become serious because doubt is kind of like this precursor to unbelief, mm-hmm. which we don't want to go there, mm-hmm. okay? And so out of uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 17, you read this. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Now, you categorize doubt as a work of the flesh because mm-hmm. it is contrary yeah. to the confidence that we can have in the Spirit of God. It is. Yeah. It is. And I never saw it in those terms okay. before, but I'm so glad that you kind of connected that the way that you did. Okay. So my question to you would be this. Can you elaborate some more on something that we've all committed, doubt? We've all had instances of doubt in our lives. Can you elaborate more on doubt being a work of the flesh? Yeah, you, you know, I think uh, what I would probably start by saying is, is, let me go back and talk about the seriousness of the attack of doubt on our lives. You know, I, I don't think it's necessarily intentional for any of us, but I think we have a tendency to sort of, if I can use, this, say, use the word minimize mm-hmm. okay. the attack of doubt. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I'm just kind of going through a doubting season. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just struggling a little bit, right. you know, Pastor Ron. My, you know, my faith isn't quite where I want it to be, so I'm kind of doubting a little bit. And, and it almost has that, that, that tone of it's not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. And it's like I said a couple of weeks ago, I think we have to stop back and think about the, the seriousness, uh, seriousness of doubt as it relates to the arsenal of the enemy. Right, yeah, right. I mean, it, it's one of the chief tools mm-hmm. I believe of that. Satan's mm-hmm. arsenal. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about it, and, and I, I gave this example, but I'll refresh your memory. Think about it this way, I mean, the first time the enemy ever had a chance to attack man, he used the attack of doubt. Mm-hmm. He did. did God really say that? That's you know? mm-hmm. and, and then, you know, his first opportunity to come at Jesus. Now, this is the Son of God, you mm-hmm. know? The first opportunity he had to come with the Son of Jesus, he used the attack of doubt. If you are right. the Son of God, then go ahead and turn those stones mm-hmm. to bread. Mm-hmm. You know, that mm-hmm. interjection into our mind, the question of doubt. You know, is this really reality, really what's going on, or is there something else in the works here? And so uh, here's what, what I see when I think about it, about it in that particular vein. It's an attempt to manipulate the mind and cause us to give into our flesh to detour our destiny. Mm, Wow, Mm, wow. That's what it's trying to do. We have a destiny, and I'm going to show you Mm -hmm. in just a second what I'm Mm. talking about, but it's an attempt to manipulate my mind so it will cause me to give into the flesh to detour my destiny. Because Mm. here's what doubt does, guys. It causes me to lose confidence in God's ability to take care of me and to cover me. That's it. Wow. That's it. It erodes it. That's a work of the flesh. Mm-hmm. That's a work of the flesh. It causes me to say, well, here's what it says. So, well, if God's not going to do it, I'll take care of this myself. Mm-hmm. Come mm-hmm. on, somebody. Yep. Mm-hmm. If God's not going to do it, I'll wow. take care of this myself. And that's a flesh work. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing that Abraham and Sarah went through. So we're in pretty good company, guys. Come on yeah. now. Mm-hmm. We're in pretty good company. It's the same mm-hmm. thing that Abraham went through. He had the promise of God. You are going to have a child of destiny. Mm-hmm. But what happened? Wow. Mm. It took a long Come time. Come on. Yeah. So here's Abraham's thought process through Hyatt's di- dictionary. Okay, God, <laughs> if you're not going to do it, I'll take care of this. And he went mm. down and found Hagar, the Egyptian wow. handmaiden, wow. and okay. still dealing with a flesh covenant we're dealing with today. Hey. Come on, somebody. Wow. Hey. wow. Tell the truth. <laughs> wow. Still dealing with a flesh, flesh covenant. See, the spirit covenant was God's promise to Abraham. 
I, God Almighty, am going to give you a child. That's a spirit covenant. Mm. The flesh covenant was Abraham saying, okay, God, if you're not going to do it, I'll take care of myself. Let and like I you. said, still mm -hmm. dealing with the repercussions let me help you out. of that today. Yeah, let me help you out. Let me, let help, me you help you out. out, Lord. So what's the remedy, guys? Well, the remedy is real simple. I, I told you two weeks ago about a million times, I walk with the worshipers. Yeah. I walk with the worshipers so that I'm mm. guided by the Spirit and I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm. Wow. When I'm walking with the worshipers, worship builds my confidence yeah. and it ushers in an arena of peace in my life so that while everything mm. is in turmoil and I'm wondering, what should I do? Well, I'll tell you what I should do. I should sit back and trust the power of God Almighty. Mm. He's got it all under control. Wow. Yes. Wow. Thank wow. You, Jesus. wow. 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 That's Come on, yeah, that's a, I'm gonna give you that football, that football movie, slow clap. Mm -hmm. It's like, remember the Titans over here, man. <laughs> that's what? good, that's good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? When you put that uniform you on, come to work. I, you go to work. <laughs> we'll watch the movie tonight if you haven't seen it. Well said, well said, well said. Wow, handling it. Man, that, so the idea, okay, so the idea of walking with the worshipers, okay, is, mm. is a great statement and I love that. Mm. Um, and, um, one of the things, you know, you guys have been with me long enough to know, one of my favorite passages of Scripture is uh, 1 Corinthians 12, speaking of all the gifts and the talents and the gifts of the Spirit that are in the body of Christ, yet each one has their place, mm. right? Organized and ordered as the Lord would set us. And I think Paul gives us a window not only just to spiritual gifts and like talents and things like that, but just our placement in general. There's a practical piece to it, right? Mm. Yeah. So you might have such and such gift, but you're placed in such and such local body, mm. okay? I'm going to say it one more time. You're placed in such and such local body because your gift don't float around off in space somewhere. You're a human being. So yeah. you're going to walk with a specific group of people. Yeah. And sometimes one of the things in the arsenal of the enemy is to pull us out of those places where God has set us. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the word yeah. says that in that passage of scripture on verse 18, God has set the members in the body as it has pleased him. him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Please you. <laughs> please, please you. Oh, oh, not you. Oh, it's pleased him. Yeah. It's as it has pleased him. So there's this idea then that we've been placed where God has us, right? And so there's relationship immediately yeah. Yeah. and practically attached mm, to that. So, good okay. so my good question word. for you yeah. is what are some things I want to look for in a faithful fellow worshiper that I can walk with? Well, you, you know, uh, and we were talking about this the other day, Pastor Jamie, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm going through a, a season of doubt, and I'm looking to walk with the worshipers. I'm looking to surround myself with people, like-mindedness, mm. you know, uh, someone that's going to, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I've thought so many times about Pastor Suzanne's illustration of when she was going through that, that challenge and there was Miss Karen there to say, mm. no, 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 <laughs> and, yeah. and build her back up to a place yep. of confidence. Come yep. on, somebody. Yep. A place of confidence. And so I, you know, when I think of it in those terms, here, here's what I'm looking for. When I'm going through a season of doubt and I'm going to walk with the worshipers, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for an encourager. Mm, yeah. Come on. Come on now. I'm looking for an come encourager. On. You know, guys, anybody can tear you down. I need somebody that's going to build me up. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> crucial. Anybody can tear you down. That's it. Life can tear you down. Yeah. Culture will tear yeah. you down. Yeah. I'm looking for yeah. someone that's going to build me up because mm. doubt has the potential to drag us down. It's that heaviness. Mm. Well, what does the Bible say? You know, when I, when I, uh, when I walk in worship, I lift up the hands that hang down, yeah, you yeah. know, so that heaviness is gone, but I got to find some people, someone, some people that, uh, that are walking with me that are going to encourage me and build you up and build us up rather. Super cool. And, you know, uh, I, I think of, I think of a guy in scripture named Barnabas. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't talk about Barnabas a whole lot, you know? Mm -hmm. well, you know, his name kind of gets mentioned here and there, but you know, Barnabas had an exalted position in the office of apostleship. Mm -hmm. He had a real high position uh, as he maneuvered with the apostles. Uh, even though we don't, you know, we don't mention his name a lot, he was a key factor in this thing called the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And when I think of Barnabas, I got to go back to what Barnabas means. His name means son of encouragement. Oh, come on now. That's, it. That's what his name means. He yes. went around encouraging <laughs> and building up. In Acts chapter 4, he found a needy person and helped him. Mm -hmm. Study the life of Barnabas, man. Mm -hmm. It's going to just, yeah. it's going to yeah. suck you. In Acts chapter 4, he finds a needy person and helps him. 
Acts chapter 9, he finds a lonely person and includes them. Mm -hmm. How many of you felt doubt and felt lonely? Come on, mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. You look for that encourager and they include them. He found a criticized person and affirmed mm -hmm. them. Acts chapter 12. Mm -hmm. He found a failing person mm -hmm. and restored them. Acts chapter 15. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the life of Barnabas, what I see is him going around mm -hmm. and encouraging people. That's the person I'm looking for yeah. when I'm going yep. through that season of doubt. Because regardless of our source of doubt, when I walk with an encourager, yeah. I walk doubt yeah, free. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Doubt's got no place, man. Yeah, that's Why? It. Because the power of God's presence overrides that yeah, spirit of yeah. doubt. Come yeah. on, somebody. That's so good. Woo. Come on, somebody. That spirit yeah. of God's presence overrides that spirit of doubt and builds me up. And so, you know, what I see there, and I'm going to come to you with this question, Pastor Jamie, because I think it all kind of ties together really well. Walking with the worshipers and your last word that you brought on obedience. Mm. Ties together really, really, really well. I loved your connection of obedience and worship. And it reminds me of First Peter chapter 2. Here's what First Peter says. It says this. It says that you are a chosen generation. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah, you, you, ain't out, yes. you ain't out in the dark, baby. Yes. You, ain't, you have been chosen yeah. by God. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Listen, I, I'm talking to them right now. Go ahead. Do it. The royal blood of heaven flows through your veins. Wow. You ain't just stumbling around here. Come on, somebody. Yep. The royal yep. blood of heaven yep. flows yes. through your veins yes. because of the work of the cross. So, so I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a separated people. Now, here's, here's the key. Here's the key. That I am to show forth the praises of him who called me out of darkness mm. into yeah. his marvelous yeah. life. Come on. Let's go. Listen, I don't, I don't just give praise. Now, there's nothing wrong with giving praise. We know that. We did it a minute ago, and it was yeah. fantastic. But that's not what the Word says. I don't just give praise. I show praise. Yeah. Mm. I show forth the praises mm. of mm. Him who called me out of darkness into His marvelous light. So here's the question. What does my life look like as I show forth praise in relation to an obedient life? Mm. 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 Describe that for me. All I'm saying is I wish I would have queued up that Hammond B3 for you. Mm. I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, should have, I, got, I, had, I was messing with him. I had a little Hammond B3 downloaded in my phone whenever he started preaching. I should have had Aaron queue that up. I'm not next time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oregon going mm. on. Mm -hmm. PR. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was about oh, to, yeah. I was about to take a lap. Yeah, talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Yeah, really, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> well, we were talking about this this week about showing forth the praises of, of God. And, and, and um, you know, if you ask my kids, one of the scriptures that, that gets spoken a lot in my house, and uh, if you work with me closely in ministry, you'll probably hear me say it a lot. Colossians 3.23 mm. says, whatever you do, mm. work heartily as for the Lord and not as for man. Mm. Mm. Heartily, meaning all mm. of that which is within me for the Lord and not as for man. Mm. So everything I have within me is an expression. Mm. But if you rewind a little bit back in that chapter to verse 17, verse 17 says, and whatever you do, whatever yeah. you do, yeah, do good. all yeah. in the name of the Lord yeah. Jesus, giving yeah. thanks to God the Father through him. So we have these, 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 these twin gifts that are in that chapter of telling us that our actions are so significant right. because yeah. right. they are given right. as an expression right. of worship oh. unto yeah, that's the Lord. That's a good word, that's expression. It. It's good you word. know, it's an expression yeah, of worship good. unto the yeah. Lord. So it's not just I sang a song because, man, we have a variance of, of the way things are expressed. One of the things um, that I love uh, Robbie Zacharias would say was that we, we can differ in forms, but we dare not differ in substance. So there's going to be a formative difference sometimes. Man, you might take a lap and sweat. You mm. might stand softly and sing before the Lord. Mm. Yeah. You might sing mm. hymns out of the book. You might sing a new song that someone wrote. You might like rock. You might like gospel. You might rap. Whatever. Your expression in song of worship is that corporate expression. But there is a, a, an extension of that which goes far beyond just our, I sang a song. Yeah, it's exactly. the showing yeah. forth of go. God's praise, yeah. which, which really begins today for everybody when you step out of the door. Yeah. It's, mm. For some of y'all, it's going to begin right there at the entrance or the exit if you don't cuss anybody out when, when, when they cut you off. 
Can I tell the truth today? Okay. Or when you allow somebody to go ahead or at the restaurant, you're like, no, 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 you go ahead. At the, at, the, at the waitress stand, rather than say, man, we got to get in here because these children are hungry and I want to say that. Mm. Me, 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 me. <laughs> right? Okay? Yeah. That's showing forth the praise when you yeah. say, no, 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 I die to me to live Prefer. to yeah. him. That's good work. Yeah. And yeah. so the expression of yeah. my life in every way now becomes worship. So mm. this, this hits home in the idea of doubt because what happens is I realize it's not just now this thing, well, we're, we're just going through doubt like you guys are talking about. Right. This is, I realize, wait a minute, this is a very, this is an attack on my walk with God. Mm -hmm. This is an attack on my ability to show forth mm. praise. Yeah. So I then say, no, 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 no. Yeah. This is what God said. We're yeah. going to walk in that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm grabbing a hold of that. Man, I got to stand up for a second. <laughs> so I got to grab a hold. Go. Yeah. I got to grab a hold of what it is there that God go. is saying and say, at your word, I'm going to live that out and I'm yeah. going to walk that out. So that doubt is not just, oh, I'm just going to live with doubt. It's okay. I'm going to coddle doubt. It's like a little baby. Mm -mm. No. I say absolutely not because I'm called to show forth his praise. So I've mm -hmm. got to step out now and say whatever it takes, I'm going to follow what Jesus said yeah. rather than allow doubt to hold me captive here, yeah. which is a work of the flesh. Yeah. Really? Yeah, so go. we show forth his praise. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So we can express and lift a hand and lift a voice and declare, God, I'm going to do what you said, which then that shows the world. Right. Because there's some people in the world who are never going to see how well you did on Sunday lifting your hands and singing or how little you did, whatever. Mm. But they will see the way you ran that business. They will see how you parented those kids. They yeah. will see how you lived in your neighborhood Preach. and loved on them when they were Preach. going through a tough time, yeah. showing forth the praise. Well, Man, I got to stop because I'll be here all day preaching yeah, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's, that's you know, it, it, it excites me because that passage of scripture so, uh, so expresses that idea yeah. of showing forth the praise yeah. and showing that God is good, man. He's yeah. great. He is awesome. We're showing to the world, this is my God and who I serve. You're not going to get the chance to just sing all the time, but you will get the chance to live in front yeah, of people. Yeah, there you that's go. It. Mm, that's good. Doubt okay. <laughs> will mute your praise. Mm, that's oh. good, man. Some, yeah. Write that down. Yeah. Doubt right now. will mute your write praise. Write that down. Man, that mm. is so good, bro. That's, that's so true. Wow. Yeah, you just said, I'm not going to get the chance to sing all the time, but I can live all the time. Yeah, come right. on. Wow. You, man, y'all need to hear that. Yeah. You know, I mean, how many songs we sang this morning? Yeah, three. Yeah. Yeah. So you can so sing we got a all whole the time. Lot, there's a whole lot can, left in the you week. You can live yeah. all the time. Yep. And you said something else that when you started talking about doubt as it relates to my obedience, you said, as the enemy tries to interject doubt in my mind, here's what you said. It's an attack upon my walk with God. Mm. Mm. That gets really big. Mm. That, that, that gets a lot larger than, well, you know, I'm kind of going through a season of doubt. Mm. When I change that and look at it from the idea of, well, I'm going through a season of doubt too. This is an attack upon yeah, my walk yeah. with God. That gets really, really big. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. kind of, that's full conflict, mm -hmm. full, whatever the word is. That's full circle. There we go. Mm -hmm. And so what I think of when I think of something like that, Pastor Hector, is something you said, uh, and you kicked everything off. You use that phrase to the dad, help my unbelief. Yeah. You know, when the enemy is attacking my walk with God, all of a sudden it's easy to transition from full of confidence to unbelief. Mm. And, you know, I'm not saying that the dad was, was walking away from God, but he was struggling. Mm. So you use that, that illustration that was in Scripture, help my unbelief. And it was a mm. great statement that really made me think. And then something else you said along with that was how we choose to recognize Jesus will determine how we approach Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. so That's good. a good word right there. So good. <laughs> and what that makes me think of is that sounds like a major identity issue. Mm. Is. My identity in Christ. Who, I, who am I mm -hmm. in Christ? Mm -hmm. Am I going through a season of doubt so God's robbing his blessings from me? Mm -hmm. Or am I a child of God with full mm -hmm. covenant promise yeah. mm -hmm. of everything mm -hmm. that he has mm -hmm. for me? So that sounds like an identity issue. So help me to understand. Help me to understand how I become confident in my identity in Christ so we're confident in approaching Jesus. Yeah. So whether we know it or not, the way that we see someone we're in a relationship with is also an indicator of how we see ourselves mm. in that relationship. Mm. Mm. That's, that's mm. identity. Yeah. Yeah. For example, if this is my teacher, I am there student. Mm. If this is my doctor, I am their mm. If this is my wife, I am her mm. hunk of hunk of man. 
Honka, honka, burning along. I mean, I, 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 I teed that up. It was a Let's go, man. Guys, come on. Come come on. on. No, I'm just kidding. Give it one more chance. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying is that recognition works in tandem with identity. Yeah. See, we have to cherish what we see in the other person in order to develop uh, greater confidence in our own identity. Yeah. You know, and knowing your identity, uh, knowing your identity mm. is incredibly yes. important mm. yes. yeah. because yes. it comes with so many yes. benefits. Yeah. You know, Ooh, yeah. identity speaks yeah. to being known, mm. right? It speaks to being known. It speaks to um, a sense of belonging. Mm. Identity speaks to a sense of belonging. It speaks to where you might be from. You know, identity can also serve as protection, like, like a warning against anything that would try to challenge your okay. identity or okay. even attempt to re-identify okay. who you are as a person. For example, you know, um, if, knowing my wife, right? So if, if some, some lady just walked up to me and said, hey, husband, and it wasn't my wife, I'd be like, Mm -hmm. Who are you, you crazy mm -hmm. lady? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that, uh, in the context of my marriage mm -hmm. to my wife, that's easy protection, right? Mm -hmm. that, that identity serves as a protection, but it also serves a, as a protection right. inside good, of yeah. my yeah. marriage. Yeah. For example, yeah. you know, the cherishing of my wife has secured a certain identity mm. for me. Our, our relationship is established, 15 mm -hmm. years going strong, mm. right? So for example, she's my wife, I am her husband. She is my love. I am my baby. <laughs> Let's go, bro. She is, <laughs> Don't look at me when she you say that. Up. <laughs> she is gorgeous, and I can be cutie every now and then, right? So if my wife, on any given day, calls me by my first name, oh. <laughs> I get, I get startled. I get startled. Like not boo, not my love, not gorgeous, no, not anything. It's like, wait, wait, wait. Why are you calling me by my first name? <laughs> It's like this identity alert, alert, alert. Yep. And yep. it causes me to do one of two things. Either check in to see what I did wrong <laughs> or to see if everything is okay. And that's a benefit of identity. It's protection. Right. It serves right. me yeah. as a safeguard. That's true. And so these kinds of identity uh, benefits, I should say, have all stemmed from me cherishing yeah. who she is mm, yeah. in my yeah. life. Yeah. Good word. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to build confidence in your identity in Christ, mm. then cherish Jesus. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. yes. If you want to build your confidence mm. in your identity in Christ, And cherish Jesus. Good. Cherish Jesus. Cherish who he is in your life. Mm. See, because if I cherish God as my protector, then my identity knows I'm protected. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. If I cherish God as my provider, mm. then my identity knows I'm provided for. Right. Mm -hmm. right. See, if I cherish God as my father, then my identity yeah, knows man. that yeah, I am good. Good, a man. son. Yeah, that's mm. good. Yeah. Wow. So that's what I would say wow. to everyone here. Mm. Cherish Jesus and you will confidently know who you are. Mm. Yeah. Identity mm. is key. Yeah. Mm. Identity is key. Yeah. Let, me, let me throw in before you, before you wrap up your, your answer, bro. I, I, as you're even talking, I, I, I see the mirror onto our culture right now yeah. and some of these issues. And we could list them right now. Yeah. where people are struggling with yeah. their identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. Mm -hmm. And do I identify with this group, that group? Exactly. What's my sexual exactly. orientation? So many voices. Now, am I a man, am I a woman? Yeah. Well, That's right. the back and forth. It is not about whether or not you feel good about the Word of God, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about whether you feel that you want to do this or you want to do that. It is, you don't know who you are. Yeah. You, you don't know who you are. Yep. You know, to quote my, 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 my friend over here, uh, Dr. Katrina, she speaks a lot about the idea of identity and knowing who you are. When she's ministering to people and loving on people, knowing who you are is so key It is to so yeah, many of the other is. voices yeah. being shut down and quieted. Because just like Pastor Hector saying, the fact that we know who we are in a particular relationship, there's stuff that just, there's no question. 
the answer is already given. You know, like you were even talking about, you know, you know, he made a little joke about the whole, a woman coming up to him saying, hey, husband. You know, it's more subtle than that most times when people get into these foolish infidelity yep. situations. Yeah. But when some, some, some young, beautiful, whatever, or, or older, beautiful, whatever, <laughs> runs up on me, it's like, yeah. Because I know who I am and what this connection is and, and what, what my place is in that, it's a... You're protected. <laughs> I'm yeah. protected because mm. it's like, this, what? Yeah. Oh, oh you, didn't know who I, you didn't know who I was. I know who I am and I know Come who I belong now. to. Come on now. Come on. And you That's obviously it. don't know who Gina and Sandra are. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I get a witness? Check a can I get a witness? <laughs> you obviously don't know that because you wouldn't have rolled up on me in such fashion had you known. <laughs> You know what I mean? So that, that has to be the response yeah, then good. that we have, you know, right. to echo you yeah. with, with, with when the enemy wants to come after us. <laughs> apparently you don't know who I am. Yeah. That's it. And yeah. apparently you don't know who he is. That's yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So, man, Oof. goodness, bro. That's it. <laughs> Identity brings about confidence. Mm. The world needs confidence mm. yeah, today. Yeah, it does. Yeah. The church needs to be confident today. Your community, mm. your neighbors, mm. your coworkers mm-hmm. need you to be confident in who you are in Christ. Yes. It yeah. speaks volumes. It helps to uh, um, drive the culture and create a new and righteous culture so in whatever fun. context you're yes. experiencing. Mm. Yes. So it's critical. It's critical that we know who we are in Christ. Yeah. Gentlemen, yeah. That was some good stuff. Yeah, it's good. I mean, we could probably keep going all day. Yeah. We got things to do. Yeah. So let me, let me uh, pray before we head on out. How many of you enjoyed this discussion? Mm. Lots of fun. Mm. Lots of fun. I did. <laughs> mm. Lots of fun. Well, let me pray, yeah. and then we'll have thank some closing you, remarks for you. Yes, thank you, Father. Father in Jesus' thank name, you, we thank Lord. you that you have indeed you, equipped us to disarm doubt. Mm. Father, you have encouraged us to trust you, to rest in you, to worship with you, to walk with people who are a source of encouragement in our lives. Mm. You've encouraged us to be obedient to your word. All these things and so much more, God, help us to know confidently who we are in this world. We are your sons and your daughters. And so we thank you, God, for ministering us to, uh, through your word yeah. this entire Thank month. You, Father. Father, we rejoice in all that you're doing Thank and all you, that God. you have done uh, in each of us. Thank you, God. And Father, I want to take this opportunity right now. If there's anybody sitting in this uh, auditorium you, or even yeah. watching online who would say that they don't really know if their identity is in Christ, mm. I want to take this opportunity. And those believers that are here uh, want mm. this for you as well. We want to encourage you to discover and know that your identity is in Christ. Mm, So if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, thank you, God. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, if you're walking about your life not confident in who you are and whom you belong to and what purpose you've been called for in this earth, we want to encourage you to know Jesus. So if that's you, I would love, we would love the opportunity to pray for you. I'm going to go ahead and ask you to just simply raise your hand, and I'm going to lead you in a prayer uh, to know who you belong to. Mm. If that's you, go ahead and slip up your hand, Mm. and we will count it out. Awesome. Awesome. If you're watching online and you're saying, Pastor Hector, you know, I want to know who I am in Christ, then let us pray with you. Father, in Jesus' name, Thank you, Father. For those who are watching online or those who may hear uh, this message later on at a future time. Father, if you're resonating in their heart and in their mind, Father, that you have what they need. If you're revealing to them that their identity is in Christ, Father, we pray for those individuals right now. We pray that you would minister life to their souls. Mm. Father, we pray that you would save them, Father, and bring them into the family of God. Father, we thank you that you are in the business of restoring and redeeming your creation. Father, we rejoice in you, Father, that you have touched our hearts in this place today, that you have encouraged us, you've challenged us, and you've ministered to us. And so we speak, Father, over all of those who are responding to your gospel all across the world. 
Father, we rejoice in their salvation. We rejoice in you glorifying your name. Father, we declare joy over their lives, and we declare that their best is yet to come. So we honor you today, Father, for your faithfulness in all of our lives. And everybody said, amen. 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 Awesome. 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 Well, just a couple of things before we head out. We want to make sure we give you guys an opportunity to honor God with your tithes and offerings. So if you're in need of a cash offering envelope, you can find those there on the back side of the seat in front of you. Um, if you're making out a check, you can make it payable to The Rock of Gainesville. Or if you're giving online, just visit therockonline.org forward slash give. Well, why don't you take your tithe and offering in hand and let's declare it blessed. Lord, we declare that our financial increase is from you. Father, our hearts are full of gratitude for your faithful provision in our Mm. lives. And in this moment, God, we choose to be obedient to your word with the paying of our tithes and the giving of our offerings. God, we do this as an act of worship, thanksgiving, and obedience unto you. And I declare a blessing over the people as they give. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Bless you guys. Hey, guys, next week, a real special guest back with us. Uh, Pastor James Ludlow yeah. from out in Seattle. Uh, what a mighty, mighty man of God. Has a tremendous anointing and ability to hear the Word of God and deliver that uh, in such a wonderful way and speak encouragement to us. Uh, if you didn't meet Pastor James uh, last time he was with us, uh, Pastor George and Pastor Suzanne met Pastor James when he was down in Peru and they were on a missions trips together. And he came and just, just comes to bless our house, comes yep. out of his heart, yep. his giving, he his desire to just bless our house and encourage us. So yeah. uh, that will be next Sunday. So be praying this week yep. as we get ready to receive from Pastor James, and then we'll have him next Sunday morning uh, as he's with all of us then. So, so yep. be praying over this. It's going to be a good time together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Is. And on November the 8th. Mark it down. Look Mark out it now. down. Look out now. Mark it down. Look out now. Pastor George. We'll be back in Look the pulpit. Come on. Look out now. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. This is just a beautiful thing to me. This is well ahead of when we thought it would be. Yeah. He's doing well. And of course, as Pastor Suzanne would attest, you can't keep him caged up for very long. No, you he can't. just has to go. <laughs> I'd see him. I'm like, what are you doing out, man? You're not supposed to be home. Um, but he will be back with us. So, man, just, just mark your calendars and be ready to just hear from the, 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 the senior pastor and father of this house. So yeah. I am blessed to, to sit under pastor on the 8th. So be so ready good. for that. Yeah. And awesome. can I just attach, attach something to that yeah, real go quick? For it, go for pastor's it. going to be sending out a video this week through our E-line. So it's going to be an important message to our house. So as you see that come across uh, your, your uh, inbox. mailbox inbox, that's what you call yeah. it. Yeah. When you <laughs> see that, uh, please watch that. It's an important message to our house. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you, you puppies. We got you. <laughs> Be on the lookout for that. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, well, the, the weekend after that, November 15th, we are scheduled for our fall yep. seed offering. Yeah. So that's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be the first time that we do it here at our new campus. It's going to be a drive-by uh, seed offering scheduled for uh, 5 p.m. Uh, to 6 p.m. on Sunday, November 15th. So pray together as a family. Uh, agree upon how you should participate yeah. and be looking forward to that because that's going to be an absolute great time. Yeah, it really will be. It always is. And, you know, I know it's a little different with the whole driving around thing, but, you know, last time we did it at South, it was a blast. Yeah. Yes, it was. We had a really, really good time. So I anticipate it being the same thing as we are over here on North Campus. And by the way, if you're kind of new to our house or maybe you've been here for a while and really trying to find your place to serve and function in the body of Christ, let me encourage you to be a part of Growth Track. Mm -hmm. We start a new one in November, a great opportunity to cover four foundational principles to your life. Know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. That's it. And so it's held every Sunday morning at nine o'clock over in the big multi-purpose room led by my man, Pastor Tad Miller. So let me encourage you, if you're still trying to find that place of, of functioning here at The Rock, I really encourage you to be a part of Growth Track. Yes, and one last thing before we head on out. Uh, for those of you who uh, operate your lives by an analog clock, <laughs> um, uh, go ahead and um, 
<laughs> just, must, just go ahead next Saturday. Next Saturday before you go to bed, uh, make sure you wind your clocks back one hour. Daylight saving time so that, that way you show up to church the following day for Pastor James Ludlow Amen. on time. Amen. And that's all we have for you. Why don't yes. you guys stand Amen. with us? Come on. Amen. Let me pray a blessing over you and we'll head on out. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Again, for yes. this encouraging thank time, you, Father. we thank you for thank this sermon you, series that you have used yes. to minister to us. Amen. Father, we declare that we are your church, equipped to go against the kingdom of darkness, filled with your spirit. I thank you, God, that we're going to go into this yeah. week, Father, prayed up, knowing that you are with us. That's right. I thank you, God, yeah. for all that you have done today. I speak a blessing over your people. Father, may they go in peace yes. in Jesus' exactly. mighty name. Exactly. And everybody Amen. said, Amen. 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 Well, bless you guys. We'll see you next Sunday.